Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto has a pet fox kid? Subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check description. So let's begin the story. A young blonde yawned as the light crept through the glassless window and into his closed eyes, gently urging him to begin his day. He grunted and unwillingly began to stir from his threadbare blanket. The sunlight seemed to just soak into him and warm him like a sunning animal. He tossed the small blanket aside and grinned to himself, knowing that his favorite part of the day was about to begin. He put on a white t-shirt and his sweepants, grabbed his blanket and daily clothes, and left through the window. He hopped from rooftop to rooftop, practicing his flipping every leap. He cleared the town and made it past the wall quickly. This is where the fun part begins, he thought to himself. He got down in a sprinting stance and took off as fast as he could down his trail, from the grass to the trees, alternating his path every day, so that it wouldn't get worn down. He loved seeing the animals before they even managed to hear him. There was a doe in a small clearing that looked like it had a heart attack from his rather fast flyby. There was a small fox cub stalking a toad, which he stopped just for a second to watch, until it ran to hide again when he heard Naruto's approach. He smiled watching it, then flying down his path until he finally arrived. He made it to his own personal little waterfall. It isn't very big, he grinned, approaching the fall that was only a foot taller than he was, but it's all mine. He took his time bathing, then dried off using his blanket. He twisted all the water out of his blanket and got dressed in his normal clothes with his orange jumpsuit, that's what it looks like to me so deal. He was fully awake now from the cool, natural shower, and began to walk back to his home. He took his time to look at the animals on his way. He saw a young bear cub which he quickly left in case its mother got any ideas about him. He saw the squirrels playing. He saw the same fox kit stuck in a trap. He even saw him looking back again realizing what he just saw. Naruto quickly got angry. The fox demon Kaiubi, Naruto's fox demon sealed inside him, was asleep thankfully, but Kaiubi would have been pissed. Some bastard was trying to hunt it for its fur. They were hunting on his trail. They were hunting foxes on his trail. He walked up to the fox. It saw his unhidden approach and began thrashing within the trap. It cringed knowing that death would surely be upon it only for its fur. Naruto gathered his chakra to his right hand to make it stronger and stronger. His hand began to glow a deep blue, and he crushed the trap completely. The fox kid looked at Naruto utterly confused at first, then growled at him, starting to limp away, but not looking away from the strange human. He started to leave, but he began to worry a little about the leg. It's still a young fox, not quite an adult. It probably wouldn't be able to survive with its legs like that he meditated for a quick second to appear before Kaiubi. Wake up you damned fox. He mentally threw a stone into the sealed cave-like entrance. The fox demon roared in fury at the insignificant worm on the other side of the seal. How dare, the fox demon began fuming at the boy until he saw what the boy saw. He looked at the boy questioningly. Humans don't care about us foxes, no matter wh. Naruto growled at Kaiubi. Give me the scent of the fox, bastard. It should still be being fed by its mother, but it was out hunting. We both know that means it's alone. Do it or one of your own will die. The demon growled gently, starting to rebuke the boy. And don't say it isn't. You may be a demon, but you're still a fox. Iwubi looked into the boy's eyes with all his hatred and anger, searching his soul for some ulterior motive. What's one more death? I'm a demon. The weak shall die. That's the rule. He looked through Naruto's eyes at the weak fox kid. He looked at Naruto again. Know this, you miserable human the demon spat with all his hate, what happens to this kid is no longer my concern. Are we agreed? Naruto looked into the demon's eyes. We're agreed, now give me your scent so I can stop talking to your sorry face. He saw a red glow creeping under the cage, then wrapping tight around him, making it almost impossible for him to breathe, as his scent was replaced with that of a vulpine. He collapsed inside his mind to recover from the choking grasp of the demon fox, and then left his mind back to reality. He moved upwind of the fox, staying in open sight and not making any sudden movements. The young kid took in Naruto's scent, confused that it wasn't that of a human, but another fox. It kept growling at him and limped a few steps away before it stumbled onto all fours. Suddenly it felt a hand on its fur. It felt the pressure of being pinned down, but it wasn't a rough pressure. The kid turned and bit into Naruto's hand. He just looked at it reassuringly though. The human hasn't punched me or hurt me. He looks just like a human, but he doesn't act like a human, and he doesn't smell like a human. Maybe he isn't a human. The young kid slowly released his hand and then cautiously licked it. I need his help. I can't live on my own anymore, not until my leg heals anyway. Naruto carefully picked up the young kit and took it to his little waterfall. He very carefully washed where the trap had dug into its leg and bit his lip. I guess there's no other choice. I have to keep my clothes wearable because they're the only set I got. He looked at his poor blanket and sighed. I guess there's no other way. 
I don't know very much about first aid, so this is just going to have to be done. He snapped a small branch in half and laid them next to the fox. The nights are going to get colder he talked to himself as he ripped two small strips from his blanket towel. He tied the sticks on each side of his leg with the small cloth strips to help keep the kid's bone from moving too much and lessen the pain. I don't know what all this junk is for, but he has honest eyes. Maybe I really can trust him until I heal. The fox looked at the makeshift splint curiously as the young blonde carefully picked it up. It heard words that it didn't understand, but that was okay because it felt safe again for the first time in a good while. I don't know how to fix you up better, the boy said while wrapping the fox in his coat, but I bet I know someone who does. With that, Naruto began to walk, careful not to shake the kid's leg too much on his way to meet the rest of his team for their daily training. He carried the young fox in his arms, unable to run because he didn't want to hurt its leg. He arrived at their usual meeting spot to find Sasuke, Sakura, and even Kakashi there waiting for him. I guess I'm later than I thought if Kakashi beat me here. He normally would have run up to them and tried to greet them with his everyday exuberance, but not today. He couldn't afford to scare the poor kid like that. He looked at the curled up kid reassuringly and laid it down next to the nearest tree. Don't worry kid. I'm not abandoning you. But you don't need to be frightened off by that Ichiha kid, and you definitely don't need to be poked at by a girl telling you how cute you are either. He walked away from the kid a little and then ran to meet his team. Sasuke noticed the ball of fluff being laid down, but he didn't care to find out what it was. Sakura was too busy trying to flirt with Sasuke to notice it. Kakashi saw the whole thing though. Kakashi just smiled at Naruto as he began to walk towards him alone. The teacher put on a fake smile as he began to try reasoning with his good-hearted pupil. Naruto, you know you can't afford it. He noticed Naruto carrying his recently abused blanket towel with him. My, my we really are late today aren't we? Naruto looked right into his teacher's eye, the only one showing. Look kid, it's a good thought, but you don't have the money or the time to care for an injured animal. We're not going to haul around an injured animal on our mission today either. And I even picked out this mission especially for you. It can't come with us. He sighed looking at Naruto, who had retreated deep into thought for a moment. Naruto wasn't sure how to handle this. He had worked hard to earn Kakashi's acknowledgement that he wasn't a child anymore. And he had been the one complaining every single day that the missions didn't even involve any fighting at all. He knew that today was going to be a good one or at least better than babysitting or walking dogs. He looked down a little while he thought of how he should answer. Sakura finally noticed Naruto had arrived. Idiot. You're late again. She began walking towards the notorious loudmouth. Even Kakashi beat you here. You should seriously be ashamed of yourself for making us wait on you longer than Kakashi. She expected some sort of answer at least, but he just kept looking down. Since when does Naruto go into deep thought over anything? She stopped halfway to the teacher and fellow student when she finally saw the curled up fox. She looked at Naruto and Kakashi. S-H-H-H-H. She did the finger to mouth sign. She began approaching the sleeping fox silently. She looked almost like she was stalking it. Naruto looked up from his thoughts. He had completely missed her fussing at him, but he saw her stalking something. At first he didn't know what had gotten into her, but as she started to move in on the fox a little faster, he realized her target. The fox realized what the human was doing and gave a small cry for help as it tried to limp away. Naruto didn't even realize he had gathered Chakra into his feet, but he disappeared and reappeared from moving so fast between the girl and the fox. Sakura got upset that the idiot had gotten in her way. If I had a pet fox I would be so much cooler. Ino wouldn't even have a chance at Sasuke anymore. What did you do that for? It's going to get away now. The pink-haired youth almost didn't finish her sentence as she saw Naruto's eyes change to Kaiubi's and back. Kakashi stepped in quickly when he saw what the girl had seen. Naruto, he looked into Kakashi's eyes steadily. I've made my decision, teacher. I am sorry. It appears I am keeping it despite your wishes. The young kid noticed that the human-looking creature had stopped them from coming after it. It collapsed next to the tree to rest again. I need to find Kiba. Please tell me where Kakashi is. Kakashi looked back at the young blonde. This will either be really good for him or really bad for everyone else. If something happens to that fox, Kaiubi will try his damnedest to kill us all. He knew the boy wouldn't change his mind. I will tell you on one condition. He whispered into Naruto's ear. You are to protect this fox at all times with your life if necessary. Iwubi is never to see this fox injured, is that understood? Naruto looked at Kakashi a little confused and then screamed with his normal loud mouth exuberance that the team had grown to love him. You think I'd let something happen to him? He struck a ninja pose with his kunai. I swear with my kunai that nothing will ever happen to that fox. I, the future Hokage, will protect it with my life. That was so cool. They posed the words there's no way Sakura couldn't think I'm cool after seeing that. He looked around to see her reaction and realized she had gone back to flirt with Sasuke and missed the whole thing. 
The Kashi grinned down at him. I'll hold you to that, Naruto. Now, that team is babysitting the former Hokage's grandson today. You know where he lives and you'll find them there. You are excused for today and tomorrow to make sure the fox can recover completely and effectively. Kakashi's grin disappeared as he gave his warning. But you better pray for the Hokage to save you if I find that fox hasn't gotten the attention it deserved. Naruto didn't even flinch. Idiot. I'm not a kid anymore. This is more important than just goofing off I'm sorry about the mission. I'll try not to complain for a little while since it's my fault I missed it. He was really sad that he missed out on one of the few juicier missions they ever get, but he had something more important to take care of. He gently picked up the kit and cradled it close again. Now, let's go get that leg taken care of. He gently kept it in his arms as he began to walk to the Hokage's house. While the village had begun to slowly soften towards Naruto since the exam, he could see the cold stares that they gave the fox as they headed towards their destination. The young kid felt their hatred and growled at the pedestrians. One slightly drunken man picked up a rock and slung it at the fox. Naruto easily caught it with his free hand and crushed it without missing a step. Come on little buddy. Let's not egg them on. He carefully took the fox and hid the fox kid in his jacket the best he could. Why didn't he run? We foxes can't stand up to those monsters. The young kid gratefully hid itself within the warm orange fur that was Naruto's jacket. Is he insane? You can't just go waltzing around in the middle of human territory. He's going to get us killed. It sniffed the air as the wind carried a different strong scent very different from humans. Like an ad poster child, curiosity overpowered its growing fear and panic. It poked its head out of the jacket just as Naruto stopped in front of Shino. He doesn't smell like a human either. What's going on? The kitten could smell bugs crawling all over the place nearby, but couldn't see them. I'll have to be careful. Apparently this big fox never stepped in a nest before. Those things sting like hell. The kid let out a little warning yip to Naruto so he would know to watch out for the bug nest. Shino looked at the fox kid's head and then back at Naruto. You realize the village will be furious once word gets out don't you? Naruto merely nodded his head in agreement. Fine, fine. Just make sure you understand you have another responsibility now. Kib is inside. Naruto thanked Shino for his small but realistic insight that had been made obvious to him again as he approached the door and knocked. A second later Kiba and Akamaru opened the door. TCH. As much as I'd like a rematch, I'm kind of he saw the fox's head sticking out of the jacket. What's with the wildlife? He reached forward to let the animal catch his scent. All trainers know that's the first step to keeping an animal calm. The kid looked at the dog and human confusedly. Another fake human. This place is crawling with them. The fox suddenly remembered a similar strange scent. This smells almost like that four-legged monster that jazzed away mom. Are you one of the monsters that stole my mom? Give her back. The kid growled loudly at Kiba and was about to bite when Naruto stepped back a little. Hey. The kid looked up at Naruto a little confused. I didn't come here for training advice. I came because he needs some help and I don't know anything about being a healer. You'd probably know more about it than most people I know since you've dealt with Akamaru for so long. Naruto noticed Kiba's eyes shift just a little. Right. Well, the thing is, Kiba put his hand in front of the fox's nose again. And the little kid tried to bite the ninja's hand again. He doesn't seem to be very fond of dogs. I can't blame him really. They've been used to hunt foxes for a long time now. Kiba thought for a second and smiled to himself. I could just give it a sleeping pill and do it, but she would use any excuse to be with him. Though I don't know why she chose him of all people. Kiba brought Naruto inside to the kitchen. Wait here. And lay your jacket on the table. Fox on top. To help keep the kid from laying on a cold surface dot, Kiba left the room and began searching the house until he found who he had been searching for. Yes, Kiba. She asked him timidly. You really shouldn't be so shy. You should have more confidence in yourself. You have a visitor in the kitchen. I'll finish cleaning up Kinohamaru's mess. She made her way to the kitchen and saw Naruto there with the young fox. She watched him for a second, then managed to whisper to herself. Naruto, the young kid's ears folded back against its head as it realized her presence and quickly faced the new presence. A human trying to sneak up on me, eh? The big fox won't let you touch me. You'll never get us. The fox gave a little yip to make sure his protector knew about her sneaking up on them. Hinata gasped as she realized that she had been busted. Naruto looked as she started to fidget with her hands and approached them. Hello Naruto I you came she cleared her throat and collected herself for a second. You came to see me, Naruto. She tried hard not to blush as she looked at him without his jacket on, which was a rare sight. She failed and blushed looking at him. Naruto had never really been completely comfortable in front of her. She always acts so weird. He looked at her actually wondering if she could help. I don't really know anything about medicine. This little kid was stuck in a trap, so do you know anything about animal medicine? Its leg is hurt, but I can't tell how badly. She blushed as she started approaching the young kid. 
She looked at it curiously as it began growling louder at her the closer she got. She opened her biakugan and could tell that it wasn't broken, but the bone was, slightly crushed. Holy crap. Her eyes just exploded. The fox hid its head under the jacket, not even pretending to be able to fight the human anymore. Anada giggled at the kid's antics, not even realizing it was, afraid of her. What is it? She blushed furiously as she took a glance to find out what Naruto probably hadn't thought to find out. His name? Naruto stared blankly at the kid for a second and scratched his head a little. Air right his name I haven't really Hinata whispered to herself, but Naruto heard it. Air I haven't really told anybody yet he smiled to himself because he liked what he had heard. Amane. Hinata couldn't stop her face from blushing further. I am sorry Naruto if it were only chipped or broken. I know how to fix those, but I air you will need to find another. Hinata looked at the floor feeling guilty for not being able to do anything more. I'm so worthless that I circa. Naruto gave her a small hug. Thank you Hinata. You've done what you could. And I know where to go from here. He gave her a smile to reassure her. You'll show them Hinata. You already showed me. You'll become a great ninja. Naruto thank you Naruto. Hinata helped bundle up the kit for yet another walk, despite its unamused attitude. Well, let's go Amain. Naruto took Amain into his arms, noticing it was, starting to shiver a little as the temperature began to drop. Only a few hours left till dark and we still haven't gotten you fixed up. Don't worry though, not much longer now. There's nothing the old hag can't fix. The duo began maneuvering their way through the streets to what they both knew was, the last stop. The fox looked unhappily at his bigger brother. I'm getting sick of this. I mean sure I'm glad he helped. Meeting the fake humans was, nice, but that doesn't fill up my stomach, help my leg, or get me out of being carted around in this friggin fur pouchy thingy. The fox looked at Naruto the whole time, making sure his big brother knew that this had better end soon. They quickly found themselves at the entrance to the village's office building for ninja m-i-s-s-i-o-n-s -S -I, I don't know what to call it other than that. Naruto didn't even acknowledge the guards as he entered and headed straight to the Hokage's office. If you just walk in they think you're coming about a job, haha. <laughs> he made it to the entrance, but this time the guard stopped him. What do you want? The Hokage can't be seen talking to the likes of you the other guard chimed in his two cents as well. Yeah. Don't you know that the Hokage is a very busy woman? She can't stop just playing with your new pet. You're not even worth being seen by someone like the guards looked at the boy noticing that he had clenched his fists. They also saw his eyes slowly narrowing into small slits where his pupils were. Sunade. The young looking woman flinched knowing that this would quickly become very painful for the latest pair of guards. Not worth being seen is that how it is? The young boy's chakra began to twist around him. I won't let you get away with those words, I'll kill you. Naruto charged forward at the two guards. HMPH. Blind rage. You may very well be the worst ninja I've ever seen, boy. The first guard met Naruto head on. He punched Naruto in the temple, trying to make it a one-shot win. His hand went through Naruto's illusion, and suddenly there was a tightening vice grip around his throat. Naruto was dragging the man down to his eye level by the guard's throat. I'll kill you, you parentless bastard. The other guard had sneaked behind him and started to slice into Naruto's back as the Hokage opened the door. Naruto stop right now. A kunai stopped right at the second guard's throat. Amain's growl could easily be heard as Naruto slid the kunai over the guard's throat, making a sharp then cut that didn't even break through the skin. The guard's eyes widened as the Naruto he was, about to stab disappeared in a small puff of smoke, and the first guard crumpled onto the ground. If he keeps getting this much better I'll have to start keeping him in town just to keep him and that noisy trio of kids away from here. Sunade sighed to herself and gestured for him to follow her into the room. Fine, fine. Come in. Look Naruto, I've already told you. I'm not going to teach you new techniques, no matter how many times you what's that growling. Naruto pulled out his new friend and placed him on the table. He registered the widening of Tsunade's eyes and noticed her retreating to think about everything that might result from his interesting choice of companion. After a few unnerving moments she broke the silence. Naruto, you know how this village views foxes ever since then. You can barely take care of yourself. What makes you think? Naruto interrupted her. What makes you think I'm asking for permission? I needed a healer, not a hokage, not a friend, not a mother. Hinata and Kiba can't help. I came to you because I had to. He looked at Amane, and she could see the determination that the boy was, slowly becoming acknowledged for. She tapped young Amane on the neck, and the injured creature went to sleep. Well, that takes care of the growling she looked at Naruto and couldn't help herself as she started examining Amane, quickly finding the slightly crushed leg. I see where did you more growling, but louder was, heard this time, and she checked the fox to make sure it was, still asleep. Naruto grumbled a little at his stomach and blushed a little as she noticed. Tsunade sighed again and rolled her eyes as she pointed her at her small hidden stash of snacks in the drawer. She was pretty much finished with her thorough examination when she noticed Naruto hadn't gotten any snacks from her stash. 
He merely answered her confused look with, one favor is enough for today. His ninja skills aren't the only skills that are growing, it'll take a while. Why don't you go home I'll have to fix him up tonight and drop him off tomorrow, okay. She saw Naruto's look of distrust and realized her mistake, I guess I wouldn't trust anyone to deliver the fox either except maybe Kakashi maybe. Just wait here then I'll be there for a while, but just stay here until it's done. She saw his nod and wondered if he would really be able to take care of the fox. The answer she gave herself. He's Naruto, of course he can. The main was, running he didn't know where but it was, pure darkness as far as he could see. His nose smelled the thick heavy scent of blood. It quickly flooded his nose to everything else. A sudden glow were red in the distance, and he could see the coat of blood on his legs and bloody tracks left by his paws from his running. He ran from the blood. He ran away from the scent and closer and closer to the red haze. He got closer and closer until he could make out a small image of black against the reddening background. He saw the faint lump of black turn towards him. It wasn't so little anymore. It was getting bigger, not bigger closer. He felt the fear building inside of him, slowly trying to paralyze him he did all that he had ever done his entire life. He ran. He didn't want to go to the blood, but blood was better than a demon. Help me, someone, anyone. Mom. Dad. Brother brother. He looked ahead of him and saw the iron gate. He ran through the small holes at the bottom of the iron gate, as sharp claws slid under right behind him to try and catch him. The roar of anger flooded his ears. Hate anger those were his last thoughts as he stirred awake. The main woke up to the sound of his newfound brother's stomach, grumbling much too loudly for his ears to ignore. I haven't had a good meal in a while either. He padded over to the sleeping ninja and for lack of a more efficient way to do it, the kid bit into Naruto's hand without any regret. Naruto quickly woke up to several small stabbing pains in his hand. Ow. What the fool Naruto looked at his hand and saw a fox looking right at him with the plainly obvious expression of feed me. He felt his own stomach growling at him and looked back at the fox. I understand, but never ever wake me up like that again, or I'll throw you off the roof. Oddly Amane nodded as if he understood. Then Naruto looked around. It looked like his place, but this wasn't his blanket. It was clean, no rips or tears, and unlike his other blanket, this one was actually big enough for a small bed. Crap. That's two that I owe the old hot amid. Cut it out. Young Amane, his teeth gripped around Naruto's hand again, was tired of waiting around and was getting hungry. Naruto picked up the eager kit. First things first, how's that leg of yours? He poked at it a little and gave a few light tugs. Since there wasn't any reaction he just dropped the kit to the floor to see if it favored the leg when it landed. Good. I'm hungry. You're hungry. No more biting me in the hand or arm actually, just don't bite me. Those are today's new rules. He took a moment to consider the best way to quiet their stomachs. I'm out of free Raymond coupons, and even if I stole it, I doubt that a main would appreciate the unequal flavor and texture of Raymond. Need to shower and I'm hungry. Food first. Naruto pounded a fist into his other hand for emphasis. Then out the window they went. The main glanced at all the small bushes they were passing. This'll be good hunting. A main stalked around the bushes, focusing on the rabbit that was trying to hide underneath. A main kept looking deeper and deeper into the bushes, checking for the rabbit's escape routes, the slits in his eyes getting narrower and narrower. He began to race after the unsuspecting rabbit, Naruto quickly following behind. Several moments later, the only one left hungry was Naruto. This was when Naruto established the next two rules on the to be taught list. Food is to be gathered, prepared, and cooked before eating, and food is to be shared. Another rabbit and some berries later, Naruto and Amane began their hike to the shower waterfall. They took their shower, Amane too, and Naruto began to consider everything that was truly important for his new friend. We've got you some shelter. We got you food you got your own fur so those are the basics. But we better get you a collar or something so you won't get hunted by accident. It shouldn't be too big, but it needs to be noticeable he thought back to what had identified him in his younger days. It'll be perfect. The main didn't trust the path yet, so he followed his big brother from the sidelines, darting from bush to bush and staying out of view for the most part. When they got back to Kanoha's gates, the young fox looked through the leaves at the humans guarding the gate. Next thing he knew, he was being lifted and stuffed under the orange jumpsuit with only his head poking out. He began wondering on the walk back. They noticed me for sure with those cold stares, but they aren't attacking. What's so special about him? They must be scared of him. The young kid regarded his recently adopted big brother with a little pride. Well humans can be dumb sometimes. Maybe they think he's a demon fox. Amane grinned inwardly at that thought. Stupid humans. Several minutes after entering the main road inside the city, Amain noticed a square-shaped rock tucked against a fence. Sneaky little devils. Can't sneak up on me and my bro though. Amain growled at the rock replica and then began biting at it and moving behind it to do more damage. He pounced on it for the kill shot when it burst open with a blast of gunpowder. What the hell. 
The kid was blown away towards Naruto. This won't end well. He saw the impact coming, but suddenly he was caught and twirled around once to keep from getting any force impact. Amain took that as his chance to hide from the bad smelling and ear splitting noise. He climbed into the jacket, then poked its head back out after hearing loud coughs and hacks from using too much gunpowder yet again. Naruto looked at the children that had dubbed themselves the Konohamaru squad. Oh jeez. I don't have time to play with them today. Listen guys I can't not today okay? Konohamaru, the previous Hokage's grandchild and leader of the group, looked at Naruto almost pitifully, then tried to go for a different approach. I didn't want to play ninja with you anyway. I was going to challenge you, my rival whom I have high hopes for. But I see you have an attack animal now. I won't let you outdo me. I'll come back another time, and me and my attacking animal will wipe the floor with you. He grinned at Naruto, knowing that this would be one of his many challenges that would easily be defeated. But the grin was because he knew that he would learn something from this encounter someday and become stronger for it. That always seemed to happen around Naruto with any character. Well that was easy for once Naruto just took his luck in stride and continued to the apartment. He didn't quite understand why he had done all these things for the fox. He didn't have extra money just laying around. He was a poor child, usually irresponsible, he had even killed forest animals for food himself. So why is it that I decided to take care of a fox? Of all the creatures I chose this one? He asked himself. Naruto patted Amain's head like an older brother to his younger sibling. Once they arrived in the apartment, Naruto put the fox on top of the quilt and began rummaging through his older belongings that he kept but no longer used. Amain watched him usedly as small t-shirts with patches cut from them and shoes that had been worn away from lots and lots of running were thrown around in the air. I don't know what he's doing, but this is so boring. Amain quickly found something to amuse himself with. A shoestring from one of his older pairs of shoes that had busted was laying in front of him. Amain pretended it was a snake and began pouncing on it and chewing it in his mouth to ease the boredom until what the hell is this? Naruto had put his old pair of goggles around one's neck and got rid of the slack until it was snugly against his chest lower neck. I don't know what this is, but this has definitely got to go. And so for the next hour and a half, Amain tried everything within his power to get the goggles off of him while Naruto watched him usedly. Lunch time, well Amain, it's time to find out if you're a part of the Yuzume clan or not. This is it. The moment of truth. A half bowl of hot ramen was placed in front of his own bowl. Dig in. Naruto took his time and savored every bite at first. Then, once his taste buds had gotten used to the ramen he wolfed the rest of his bowl down. The main on the other hand, was more cautious. He dipped his paw in it and brought a small taste of the soup to his mouth. Weird, not bad, just a little different. At that the kitten began the ATING lapping. Up the ramen until he was all gone. His older brother looked at him and smiled. Welcome to the Yuzumaki clan. Naruto was truly happy. Sure it wasn't as good as having an actual family. But all he had known his whole life was surviving on his own. Now he had family. A lot weirder than most families for sure, but it still counted. Because he was no longer alone. Naruto noticed that the fox was still looking around the room after lunch. Ah, that's right. Sorry about that. I hope you're ready for it, cause here we go Amain, the grand tour. Naruto grinned and picked up the fox, placing him at the front door. The young fox just looked at him confusedly, but understood the follow me and pretend like you understand concept. Naruto pointed at the door. That is the door but we don't go out there anymore. Not since my neighbor put some kind on it, it burns my hand when I touch it, but nobody else seems to be affected. Naruto scratched his head a little and paused in thought for a second, then disregarded the small problem again. The main followed Naruto's footsteps, occasionally pouncing on his feet to try and get him to play. Next, Naruto guided a main to the kitchen. Stoves busted except for one burner, but the microwave works. He looked at a main shifting through the trash, looking for something to play with. What? It's not like I can afford this stuff. I take what people toss out. Amain shook his head a little to get rid of a pesky fly. Naruto took it as a sign of being unimpressed. So what if it's not top notch? It works well enough. Naruto smiled to himself. How many genins can say they make it on their own? And this is a very, very important room Amain the bathroom. Naruto began enjoying himself. He finally had someone to talk to, even if it wasn't important and they didn't understand. This is it. The place where we do the three S's. Although right now it's only two S's, but I'll end up doing that three road S when the time comes. Naruto picked up a main who had finally found some entertainment in a milk carton in the hallway, with a picture of a missing nin on the back. Nope. No toys here. This'll be the place with toys. A main followed Naruto still bouncing around the place looking for his own personal playground until he saw the ever familiar floor mat with a newly acquired blanket gift from, remember. Near the mat was a framed picture. It was of him with his teacher, Hiruka. 
He was the first person to accept Naruto demon and all. The closest thing to a father figure he had, really. Amain noticed Naruto staring at the picture and sat in front of it, studying the picture curiously. Naruto just looked at the picture for a few moments, recalling his best moments with the person who accepted him. Amain didn't understand why, but he was intelligent enough to know that this picture was important. They spent several minutes together just looking at the picture until Naruto broke the silence with his world rocking realization, it's training time. Naruto punched his hand into his palm. Come on Amain, time to get stronger. He picked up a fox and brought it to the roof, dropped it, and took off to the other roof and stopped just before his next jump. Duh. He looked back at Amain, come on. We gotta get moving. Get the lead out. Amain looked at him confusedly, not understanding why they were leaving when the apartment looked like a great place to play around in. He looked up as Naruto appeared in front of him. Okay little bro, guess we start with the basics of roof jumping. He picked up the confused kit and pointed in the direction they needed to go. That's the general idea. He then proceeded to chunk the kid into the air and onto the next roof. What the hell did he do that for? Equals 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 several chunks later equals 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 he grinned in success and leapt across the gap, giving Amain a small pat on the head and a little encouragement. Maybe training him won't be so hard after all. They finished leaping out of Kanoha and ran non-trackable towards Naruto's special showering area. This training sucks the most. It's the dumbest, least encouraging, most boring utterly wasteful training there is, which is why it must be good for me. But it's what I need to work on the absolute most, and with that thought in mind, Naruto began walking on top of the small pool waterfall and began several tojutsu routines. He began punching and kicking the air falling in the water most of the time, when he ended up relying on one leg cursing and pushing himself harder and harder. Focus every hit don't think about the chakra concentrate on the glub glub out of the water, think of the fight, make every hit count, make the surroundings fade out eyes on the opponent. He trained this way until night began to surround him, and his body was thoroughly worn out of chakra. He lay there panting out of exhaustion, his eyes slowly beginning to close, until he heard a voice or pure strength and malice make his mind shake. You have three seconds until you've broken your promise, boy. The voice spoke again just seconds later. Too late. The voice became a booming snarl of a laugh. What promise? I haven't broken any Amain. His eyes shot open and looked around only to see the surrounding darkness. Amain didn't understand how his brother did it, but he watched as his brother literally walked on top of the water. If my brother can do it, then so can I. Amain got next to the water and took his first step, with his pad barely touching the water, slowly starting to put weight onto it, it didn't sink. Eat that big brother. I can do anything you can. He took his next step barely placing his paw onto the water, then slowly starting to put more weight onto it, when all of a sudden his first paw jerked suddenly, and the front half of his body fell in. What the hell. He lifted his body out of the water, and his face came eye to eye with the head of a large snapping turtle. So I just have to make sure I step on turtle shells, he watched Naruto leaping around the small pond, throwing his warm up punches. There's no way there's that many turtles in this tiny pond Amain was, snapped out of his intellectual approach to chakra, by snapping turtles quickly onto his extra fur around his NECK younger foxes have that like dogs do I think. Amain began trying to claw it off and scrape it off against a rock, but it only made it hurt even more. He yelped in pain and ran away not knowing what else to do, he's just a kid, kids aren't exactly well compassed while experiencing pain. Night was, falling as the fox shot out of the bushes and found himself facing the back of a human. Three seconds the dark chakra wrapped around the figure in a dangerous embrace. And suddenly the figure turned his eyes towards a mane. The young kid looked at the dark figure with true horror as it raised a kunai, then threw it at the young kid. The last thing the fox's right eye saw was the evil eyes of the ninja that had swirling holes in his eyes, brother save me. Was, the last thought the young fox had before passing out in pain with his eyes wide open. Equals 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 and, back to Naruto equals 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 Poor, pitiful child you broke your promise. As I recall you swore on your kunai to protect that little, defenseless kid. Didn't you? Naruto stood inside his mind in front of the gate in silence. The realization hit him like a punch from Lee. He had failed. He looked at his kunai in real life and threw it into the ground. I swore on a kunai, and I failed on a kunai. In his mind he looked right at the fox. But, I'm not going to let that stop me, Kaiubi. Tell me where he is and I will swear on my life that he will survive. 
The fox demon was actually surprised. This was an entirely new game they were about to play. There were no more little pot shots of pride. Are you truly willing to pay the price if you fail again, child? Naruto looked into the evil, purely chaotic eyes in front of him. Knowing that if you fail, you'll have to open this gate and surrender your body and soul to me to do with as I wish. Knowing of my pure hatred for this Konoha that you struggle daily to protect in your own way. Naruto nodded his head and spoke forcefully in the face of the demon, right in front of the bars, where the fox had only to let his claws slide through to be rid of him forever. I won't take back my words, that is my way of the ninja. Alright, child this is what it boils down to. You can find him, but you have to give a small piece of your body to me to do it. He saw Naruto about to object. And quickly intervened. Shut up child or this bet will not be any fun. Your auntie is to give me an eye. With that, you will be able to find your oh so precious brother that you managed to lose so quickly. My auntie is to enhance that it will allow you a direct connection to that fox and to me. Him threw his eyesight and me threw a portion of my chakra meager to myself, but to you it would be rather substantial. Remember Brad. When it dies, your body belongs to me. Naruto looked right back into the fox's evil eyes. And when a main loves you will grant me one favor of my choosing. What? Foolish Brad, do you think I would leave that much room for you to Naruto interrupted him speaking just as loudly as the angered demon dot I wagered my life in my village. It's time for you to wake up and see everything that I wagered you damn fox. Kaiubi growled in fury, knowing that what he said was true, but not thinking the boy would have realized it. Very well Brad, you won't make it anyway. The fox roared triumphantly as Naruto fell to his knees in the real world. Clutching his left eye in pain as a searing and stabbing sensation flooded his nerves, he clawed his fingers into the dirt to help deal with the pain. The thin lines on the side of his face became a darker, more apparent red, not growing, just becoming more pronounced. He opened his altered eye and immediately recognized where the kit was. More importantly, he saw the dark figure with chakra wrapping around him approaching the young kit with a kunai in hand. Shit. Naruto crouched low to the ground and didn't even bother talking to the trees, because it would only slow him down. He felt the fox's chakra flowing into his feet, pushing him faster and faster, imagining to himself later on that this might be what Lee felt like when he ran circles around Gara. Trees flew into and past his field of vision, animals could only watch as they saw human go screaming past them. Faster quicker he's almost there. I have to go faster. Ahahaha, better hurry child it seems you might lose yet another member of your family, the fox mocked Naruto. You heard his legs get going, or we will have lost a precious someone go go what's holding me back. Suddenly as if his whole body were screaming in desperation, he began going faster than he had ever gone, and even faster than he had ever seen his eyes hadn't been used to that speed and tree limbs, thick and thin, strong and weak, tried to hold him back. His body didn't even care as he barreled through all of them, snapping them easily and not slowing down. He left a trail that later the people of the town would dub the path of the demon. He broke out of the last set of trees and into the final clearing, the kunai, leaving the hand of the figure that suddenly saw the newcomer. He watched the blonde boy block the path as kunai embedded itself deep into his shoulder. His blood tried to slowly escape and soak into his jacket. The spirals of chakra slowly ebbed away and disappeared from the dark-haired boy. His shirinjin stopped spinning, and the last thought the surviving Ichiha had was, this is Naruto. This is dead last. Before a palm landed on his chest and threw him several yards back and imprinted him into a tree, knocking him to the ground unconscious. Naruto cradled a mane close to his chest, leaving the dagger in, but holding the kit so that it didn't even move. He sped towards the gate and shouted to the guards through the wall, My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. I am to become the next Hokage. Open this gate now, or I swear to you Kanoha will fall upon a wrath that has been caged away and hidden for 13 years. Not sure on the year number, but it was, describing the times of Kaiubi's assaults upon Konoha, boss and will kill me for this. The gate opened enough for two people to pass through, one guard attempted to block the entryway, but before the other could fill in the gap, all that remained in front of them was, dust, as Naruto had already flown past them, looking for a particular house. Three intersections later, he arrived in front of the door and pushed on it, cracking it off from the hinges. A large dog looked at Naruto and growled, until it saw Naruto's left eye and hid in the corner cringing. A smaller dog upstairs began barking, and the ninjas guarding the gate approached him from behind, with weapons drawn as the mother, father, and son came down the stairs ready to kill the intruder. Kiba was the first to notice the strong scent of the fox and just dropped his weapon upon seeing the eye. Naruto walked right up to Kiba's parents and started without turning around. This fox must live or you will have more than just nightmares about this eye. The guards kept approaching closer from behind, extremely cautiously until Naruto turned his head to face them. They looked into his fiery colored, slitted eye and dared not approach another step. Naruto laid his newest family member onto the momentarily clean table. He pulled out his kunai, making the people around him a little more nervous. 
he tossed it to Kiba's father, not throw, toss, and stepped away from the table, moving back against the wall. As the shock wore off, Kiba's father began to understand a little of what was going on. He understood that this fox was in a very bad situation. He understood that it was now bleeding onto his once clean table, and he understood that this little brat had threatened him with a jamin. I only work on dogs, boy. He looked right into Naruto's eyes, getting ready to assume superiority over such a cocky little brat, then began to shake a little as he finally took in the horror that was, a true fox's eye slit down the middle and a blazing red. That's bullshit. I know animals come in here all the time for surgery. You will keep this fox alive. I'll even pay you for your services as much as I can. This has to be done. Naruto. Naruto cringed knowing too well who that voice belonged to. What has gotten into you? First of all you interrupted my drinking with Jureya, who was paying. Second of all you are causing way too much noise. And to top it all off you barged through gate security and into a private home. Now what is going on? Naruto began to worry a bit and thought hard on how to make this less annoying to her. He adjusted his ninja headband to cover the eye that everyone was staring at and turned to face her. I need some help again he looked at his little brother lying there on the table. Sasuke attacked a main. I had to run to get here to get treated, but nobody is fixing him, and I can't let him die or something really bad will happen. His one eye was, looking at her showing her as much honesty and need as he could. But unfortunately, one eye wasn't enough. Quit the Kakashi impersonation and tell me exactly what's going to happen. Now she waited impatiently to hear the boy's excuse, but he didn't answer her. She started to become angry and was, getting ready to lecture him when he raised his headband back up. She gasped when she saw it and quickly went to see the animal, with Kiba's parents assisting her. I expect a complete explanation afterwards. Until then, take a seat. She held her hand out expectantly towards the animal trainer and snapped them back to the task at hand. Scalpel. God this is going to be a long night she carefully cleaned the blood out of the eye area and noticed that it was a lot less than it should be. She also noticed that for some reason, the kid's body was performing perfectly throughout the entire procedure. No complications, blood vessels and nerves even the actual eye, it all performed perfectly for healing. Interesting not enough to prove it yet, but this might be an even more amazing creature than even Naruto realizes. Diba just looked at Naruto, then back at the fox, then back at Naruto. Naruto watched nervously as his only family went under the knife. The Anbu guards went back to the gate to re-secure it. And that's how the long night proceeded. The sun set and rose again before Tsunade finally was able to hand Naruto the young kid. The blonde child stirred in his seat and cradled the sleeping fox closer against his body, feeling the fox breathing deeply. Thank you Granny Tsunade he smiled and gave her a kiss on the forehead. I guess you'll be wanting that explanation now he scratched the back of his head wondering where to begin. Naruto was dodging Tsunade for all he was worth while he ran away. He knew she was really playing around with him, but it was fun. Hardly anyone played with him. He enjoyed the small taunts they threw at each other, and besides the old hag probably needed the exercise after sitting around at a desk for so long every day, a.n. He. He was truly enjoying himself, dodging while carrying the sluggish kid. Tsunade had to pull her punch back when they neared the bridge. Naruto had stopped. More importantly, Amain had started growling loudly at Sasuke. That fox should still be asleep for another six hours at least. Tsunade grimaced slightly to herself. That doesn't prove anything, not yet anyways. She cleared her throat and returned to the matter at hand. Naruto. When do you plan on giving me your explanation? The can't be chasing around a prankster all day after all. She smiled at the blonde child who had completely changed her life. The blonde pointed at Sasuke. There's the bastard. He felt his anger rising and tried hard to keep his chakra from channeling through his body. He's the one that hurt my brother. He balled up his fist until he felt a firm hand gripping his shoulder. That's enough, Naruto. Tsunade exhaled an annoyed sigh. Of course it couldn't be some stupid villager it just had to be a teammate, this is going to be one great big pain and Naruto's eyes met hers, and she knew that something would have to be done. She approached the Ichiha air and cleared her throat. Shall we take a walk? Sasuke just nodded lightly, not understanding what this was about. Naruto's eye didn't leave Sasuke's until Tsunade began their little walk, walking between the two of them. Sakura just watched them walk off with no explanation at all, but she knew better than to question the dot. A quarter mile or so further down the road. So, now that we have no bystanders, eavesdroppers, or distractions, why don't we sort this mishap out? She looked at Naruto. The best way to go through this is to explain everything that happened from the accuser's side. Sasuke just listened, still not quite sure what was going on until he saw the red ball of fluff in Naruto's hands. Of all the foxes in the woods, Naruto gladly voiced his side of the story. I was minding my own business practicing when damn it. I can't tell him about the eye, something close to the truth close to the truth close to the. I noticed that Amain had run off. 
So I went to go find him and when I finally saw him using that forbidden chakra. Sasuke was using him for target practice. He took out a main's eye. And mine. So I punched him into a tree, grabbed my brother and took him to Kiba's place. I saw their adult dog back in school when it came to pick up Kiba. It has an eye patch too so surely they knew how to fix it, okay? Tsunade nodded in understanding. We get the picture. Sasuke you heard him, so now it's your chance to explain what happened. I was training target practice. I heard an animal in the bushes and hunting is a perfectly acceptable way to hone weapon skills. I saw a fox head come out. Killing foxes is even supported by the villagers. He glanced out the corner of his eye and saw both of his fellow walkers dislike that last comment. So I decided to use it for target practice. If he had looked closer after his pet then this whole incident could have been avoided. Sasuke smirked at the dropout. You got nothing, you dumbass. But I even had him wear my goggles around his neck. Naruto growled looking right at his teammate, which could have been stolen from any trash heap in town. Sasuke growled right back at him. Tsunade stomped her foot, cracking the ground between them. They quickly remembered their places and went back to their respective sides of her while she started to walk them back. Very well this will cause a lot of trouble for me. Go back to your team and I will find a way to deal with this matter later today. After they were dismissed the two found their walk had circled right back to the bridge. She left them there with an utterly confused Sakura, waiting on their late instructor. Bakashi watched as Naruto just walked away. He sighed to himself, knowing what he had to do next. A few hand seals later and with a little properly administered chakra, he stood in front of the Hokage's office. He walked in without even stopping for the guards. Tsunade stood before him in an obviously frustrated state. She had papers clenched in her hand. Wads of paper were on the floor. She was, growling. Maybe this is a bad time. She glared at the intruder with an evil smile spreading across her face. Oh no you don't. You're not leaving this room. We have a lot to discuss. Kakashi flinched, knowing that this might not bode well for his future. We will start with your students. Fade to Black P. Naruto left to go train away some of his anger. He had just left his teacher in the clearing. He had even forgotten about the raiment for supper. Fine. If he wants to spend all day on getting us to refine our control, then I won't waste time doing it by climbing stupid trees or even walking on water. Naruto went to his secret training area. He kept this spot tucked away for his Rasengan. Only that move had been done here until now. He meditated with a mane in front of him. Even when I close my eyes I can still see everything little brother. I'll never fail you again. He took one last look at his kunai that he had buried deep inside the trunk of a completely demolished tree, down to his shins. Hey. Wake up you damn fox. We got business to finish. I will be glared at this cocky mortal in front of him. How dare he. A miserable insect of a human was, demanding his presence. When I get out of here boy I will make sure you pay for every moment of trouble you've caused me. Tell me what you want my chakra for then leave this place. You sicken me to my very core, you weak fragile living cage. It's time to pay up. And I ain't talking about rent. I've come for that favor. The blonde boy faced down the demon. He stood right at the threshold. The claws rammed against the gate hard, not giving an inch. Naruto didn't flinch as the legendary claws of Kaiubi were forced to stop right in front of his face. He looked into the demon's eyes with a determination that not even Tsunade could have challenged. A deal's a deal the demon sneered. Name your price. How about revenge? I could kill that brat that harmed your brother. That'd make us both happy. The demon laughed loudly, with an evil tinge in his words that scream out the true nature of the wild demon. Well. I may have all of your life ahead of me, but I don't want to spend it looking at you, brat. Hurry up. Naruto began to waver for a second until thoughts of a main returned and slammed his doubts out of his mind. I want a contract. I want the services of the demon foxes. I don't know how to train him, and I won't trust him with anybody else. I want him to be trained by the very strongest. That is my favor. The demon's eyes widened in rage. You can't force a contract. It has to be done of their own will. Do you think that entities as powerful as myself would even consider listening to a pint-sized runt like you? Naruto glared back at the fox. I ain't forcing nothing. If you're gonna go back on your word, fine. That just proves that you're nothing more than a lying sack of shit. That bet was, made of your own free will, and you just want to weasel out of it. If you won't teach him then I'll find a way. Just like I found a way to do Rasengan. Naruto began to retreat back from his mind. Freeze whelp. What you say is true, a deal's a deal, right? The fox smirked knowingly at Naruto. Wait here and I will prepare the necessary document. The red chakra began to seep through the gate at the bottom. The chakra slowly began weaving itself tighter and tighter together. It started becoming harder and firmer as an even larger wave of chakra flooded from beneath the gates, turning the hardening object into a dark crimson red color. Sign it in blood. There's only one slot because you said you wanted my kind services. 
you could have taken even further advantage of me, but you missed your chance, and I will not let you get the better of me again. It stays with me. As a warning. You can only have one contract. The frogs will no longer answer your call. Just as you now possess the ability to summon us in a way you belong to us now. The fox laughed loudly as the document was, signed. Even in a defeat such as this. I will still get the last laugh. The demon turned around and padded deeper into the darkness of the cage. Naruto left the deep recesses of his mind and looked at his little brother as he patted him on the head. Smiling in satisfaction he told his brother, well it's time to see who's going to be your first teacher. God I can't wait to try this out. We better start off with the weakest one they got. That way if it gives us trouble we might keep it under wraps. Naruto bit his finger and used as little of his chakra as he thought he could get away with. Summoning technique. Demon Fox. He slammed his hand to the ground, and smoke flooded the ground in front of him. He looked down at his summon and his eyes widened. His breathing stopped and the rider stopped riding. Okay okay. Even though I'm not that mean. His breathing stopped and he looked down at his summon. There stood his little brother. Looking up at him as if wondering how it had gotten there. Naruto's mind was suddenly flooded with the deep laughter of the Kaiubi. He had indeed gotten the last laugh. His only family was a demon.